So today we're going to tell you about the Biomass Connect project. So I'm Jeanette Whitaker. I'm a principal scientist in soils and land use at the UK Centre for Ecology and Hydrology. And I'm the project lead for Biomass Connect, which is a project of nine partners, so the partner organisations on the bottom of the slide. Okay, so Biomass Connect is funded by the Bayes Biomass Feedstock Innovation Programme. So that's the Department for Business uh, and Industrial Strategy, or at least it was until this morning. Um, and it's a £36 million programme, uh, which is aiming to increase the production of sustainable UK biomass uh, by funding innovative ideas that are addressing barriers to biomass production in the UK. So... The UK government are investing in biomass because over the last 10 years or so there have been repeated reports from uh, organisations like the IPCC and the Climate Change Committee which have shown that biomass has an important role to play in the decarbonisation uh, of the UK. Biomass is used currently across a number of sectors from wood in construction, home heating, transport fuels but as we move through the decades, 2030s through to 2050, how we use biomass is likely to change with more emphasis on long-lived bio-based products and biomass with carbon capture and storage. But although the type of use might change, the demand for biomass isn't going to diminish. And so one of the recommendations from the Climate Change Committee in their 2018 report was that investing in domestic production, UK production of biomass crops, would be a smart move. And so this programme has kind of been born from that advice. So Biomass Connect itself um, is a £5 million pro uh, project to create a multi-site demonstration platform to support the growth of UK biomass industry as part of this drive towards net zero. What we're aiming to do is raise awareness, <coughs> excuse me, raise awareness of biomass crops through demonstrations and knowledge sharing, to generate independent information on agronomy, environmental impacts uh, and the economics of growing these crops, to also produce data on the geographic variations in biomass performance across the UK, to support innovation and to deliver evidence to policy. And when I talk about supporting innovation, uh, in addition to Bayes funding our platform project, they're also funding 11 innovation projects. These are multi-million pound projects led by the organisations with the logos on the right hand side. And they cross a variety of topics which are addressing barriers to UK biomass production. So things such as breeding platforms to increase the range of varieties of biomass crops, um, propagation, establishment and harvesting techniques, decision support tools, um, crop monitoring, drones, data capture and on-farm pelleting. Most of the projects are on perennial biomass crops but there are two projects which are on different biomass feedstocks so on semi-wild biomass harvesting that's heather from moorlands and sea grown which is looking at marine algae pro production off the North Yorkshire coast. So when I talk about biomass crops in relation to our project, these are the crops I'm talking about. So woody crops such as willow, eucalyptus, alder, black locust and poplar, which can be grown as short rotation coppice over a two or three year harvest cycle. Um, or can, some of them can be grown as short rotation forestry with a longer harvest interval. But also on the right, the perennial grasses and forbs such as miscanthus, which is quite widely grown in the UK, switch grass, fruit, you canary grass, and then cedar and arundo. And some of these are very niche crops currently, um, but they are crops which can grow in the UK and we want to show their potential. And so what is it that we're creating? What is Biomass Connect? Well, it's going to be eight uh, sites across the UK at the organisations shown on the map. So these are going to be physical demonstration sites where we're planting the 10 crops that I showed you in large demonstration blocks. The ground's being prepared currently and we're planting them in the spring. These demonstration sites are going to deliver data. So they're going to show how does 
um, poplar perform in Devon compared to Ayr so that regionally growers can be confident that these crops are going to do well in their area. And this is the first time these kind of multi-site trials of biomass crops have been established for the UK. We're also going to collect data on the environmental impacts, on things like soil carbon stocks, biodiversity impacts. Um, and at five of the sites, the ones with the asterisk on the map, um, we're also going to run the first multi-site variety trials for willow, miscanthus and another range of energy grasses. These variety trials are taking the outputs from the leading breeders in the UK and Sweden and also some outputs from some of the innovation projects. So one looking at aeroponic development of uh, planting materials and two projects looking at genomic selection um, and importing uh, novel energy grasses that haven't been grown here before. And this is just one example of the type of site. So this is um, the Northwick Rothamsted Research Station uh, near Oakhampton in Devon, uh, currently a grassland. And you can see on the figure an overlay of the trial plan. So this year we've been busy mapping, planning, procuring materials, getting ready to plant these sites up. And they will all be planted in the same kind of block um, sizes and formations so that we can do this UK-wide comparison of performance. And so in addition to this kind of physical planting, data generation and sites for people to come and see, um, we're, we're going to be running events at these sites. Um, so we've got stakeholder events planned over the next two and a half years where we're actually going to be showcasing this is what the crops look like, this is how we plant them, bringing machinery and innovations to the sites, bringing the innovation projects to the sites to really try and grow uh, awareness and knowledge around the agronomy um, and the, the potential benefits of growing these crops. And so you can get information on all of these uh, events that we're planning on our website and I'll talk a little bit more about the website shortly. But the next two events we're planning are one at our partner Bioglobal Industries uh, in late March and one in Aberystwyth, both looking at biomass harvesting. So you can actually see the process of biomass harvesting, talk to the practitioners and the contractors about the process and learn something about, about managing these crops. So the website, um, we've got a really beautiful website. We're very proud of it. Um, a colleague, Will Stiles, has done a marvellous job in leading that work. And so the website has a lot of information on already, but it's just the start. So the project's only been going for six months. Um, we're building content all the time. But it's not just information about our project. So it's a source of information about uh, events across the sector, industry events, conferences and expos, farm walks, anything biomass related. We're looking to feed through the website, through our social media platforms. We've got whatever you poison with social media, we've got one, you know, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, Instagram, stuff I don't even understand. Um, but yeah, basically, however you want to absorb information, we can provide it on biomass. Also on the website, there's a newsletter sign up and none of you are allowed to leave this little bit of the conference until you signed up for our newsletter. It's compulsory if you want the glass of wine, okay? <laughs> so, um, in addition to the website, we're also running a series of webinars led by my colleague, Kevin Lindegaard. Um, these are really engaging pieces where we get a couple of experts together to talk about a particular issue around uh, biomass crops. They're live webinars, but they're also available on the, on the YouTube site, so you can see them afterwards if you're not available when, right when they're running. But if you are seeing them live, there's an opportunity for Q&A, again, asking questions. So we've had some on land prep, on emerging markets. We've got them on al alternative biomass crops with colleagues talking about eucalyptus, for example, and they'll be running through the rest of the project. And we've also got a newsletter again um, produced by Kevin Lindegaard from Crops for Energy. And that's a short pitch for our project. So that's the introduction. Uh, if you want a longer version of this talk, I'm doing it again in the session after lunch tomorrow in Patricia Thornley's session on biomass for net zero, where I'll give you a little bit more detail about the content of the project and how we're looking to expand the activities. And we've also got stands for ourselves and some of the innovation projects which are all on the slides.